Well, I know a lot of you are talking about the high cost of college right now after the president's announcement this week to cancel $10,000 in federal student loan debt for millions of borrowers. Some say the move is a temporary fix to a much bigger problem. According to our Decision Desk HQ poll, this is interesting, 47% of respondents say the cost of attending college made them or their family rethink whether or not they even wanted to attend. And when it comes to who is most responsible for the skyrocketing cost, well, 52% believe colleges and universities are to blame. So the question tonight, how are these universities able to charge so much and the price just keeps going up? And what are they using all of that money for? Investigative correspondent Rich McHugh takes a closer look. For most Americans, paying for college will be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, expense they face in their lifetime. Averaging on the low end, $10,740 per year for public in-state tuition to $38,070 for private college tuition. But those are averages. Many are nearly double that amount. The University of Chicago ranking highest at $79,356 per year. That's $317,424 over four years. According to data from the College Board, the cost of going to college has skyrocketed, rising at five times the rate of inflation over the last 50 years. The question is why? We've been selling college as part of the American dream. Beth Akers, author of Making College Pay. And so people are willing to pay any price. That's a huge drive up in demand for higher education that allows colleges and universities to continue to raise the price year after year after year. The cost of college has gone up as we have as a country decided to subsidize higher education. Naomi Schaefer Riley is the author of The Faculty Lounges. So the more we have thrown at Pell Grants and other forms of financial aid and grants, the more college administrators have felt free to raise tuition. And you can see these graphs just go up just like this. What are these universities and colleges using this money for? One of the things that you've definitely seen balloon in recent years uh, is the number of administrators on college campuses. There are all sorts of, you know, new deans of students to have new activities, um, to ensure that uh, there aren't too many microaggressions, to ensure that kids are having fun and enjoying themselves, and, uh, you know, to deal with remedial education. Schaefer Riley argues schools are spending like crazy installing lazy rivers on campus, paying their football coaches 11 million bucks a year, but spending fewer of those dollars on education itself. So colleges have said, oh, we can cut costs on the teaching, which is of course exactly where you want them to be putting their resources, because for most parents, the whole point of going to college for a kid is that they are learning something. But colleges are like, oh, well, we can, <laughs> we'll take the cafeteria, we'll take the lazy river, we'll, we'll have these high profile tenured professors who are publishing books, and where we are gonna cut costs is actually in the classroom. And I think that's probably what's most most outrageous about the way these budgets are working. Akers believes the power to bring the cost down rests in part with the students. I want to say let the colleges do what they need to do to create the best experience for the student. The only way we're going to rein in costs is to empower consumers, that is the students, to be critical of what it is that the institutions are selling them. If we empower them to be able to walk away when the price is too high and make sure they understand what it is they're paying, I think that's what's going to really bring price back in line with value in the long run. For News Nation, Rich McHugh. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.